Chairman of God, you have been with this congregation throughout its many different lives over these 100 years. Much of that time was spent around tables like these, breaking bread together. We break bread together in communion, which was done in this hall for many years before the sanctuary was built. We break bread together on a regular basis in this congregation. It seems that as we gather over food, we think of you, we think of other people, and we think of the needs of others as well. Today we think of the needs of others as well as celebrating this wonderful 100 years. We thank you for your many gifts to us, gifts of food, of the ability to earn money so that we can buy food. We thank you for those who produce food in our community and throughout the whole world. We thank you now for blessing us this morning and ask your blessing upon us now as we share around these tables through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Uh, Nick? Good afternoon. Again, I want to welcome all of you, all the visitors, members of First Church. <clears throat> Thank you for coming out and helping us celebrate this uh, 100th anniversary. Uh, we're going to make some introductions now, uh, so be patient with us. Uh, we'll be eating soon. Judy? The main reason uh, that we're having introductions here uh, is that we did invite the mayor and the city council of the city of North Miami, uh, and we wanted to introduce them to you, but I don't see any members of them here. Do we have any mayors or city council folk here? If you're here, I don't see anybody. Mayor came during church? Okay, well when he comes back, then we will introduce him at that time. In the meantime, um, that, that was really basically all. Um, introduce yourself at your tables. Um, and right now we have, uh, we have Chelly Reed, who is again going to play for us. What a blessing. A playing a piece called Tardis by Victoria Monti. She is accompanied by Dr. Nelson Hall.
your um, um, program that's on your table. Uh, we are now going to have a series of presentations, and first I would like to introduce you to a regional minister, Reverend Bill Koch, um, who's been around a long time. <laughs> Bill was minister at Church by the Sea for how long? 14. 14 years before going on the conference staff. Um, and as a staff member of the conference, he's one of the best they've ever had. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. As uh, those of you who are part of the United Church of Christ know, uh, we are a family. We believe in the autonomy of our churches because they're out there in that community and they know what they need to do and you don't need people in other places telling them what to do. We believe in that, but we also believe that you can't be out there doing what you need to do if you're a Lone Ranger. That's really hard. And so Covenant is very important. And I love the idea that the Covenant is shown here today. Uh, raise your hand if you go to another church other than uh, this North Lambert Church. Raise your hand. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. This shows our covenant with this particular congregation this day. We are all in this together, and we certainly celebrate the uh, milestone that we're reaching today. And on behalf of you, you're going to hear from uh, Jan on behalf of the board of directors, but I wanted to uh, read you something uh, from uh, Kent. Saladi, our Commerce Minister, who was not able to be here today, uh, a letter that he uh, asked specifically that I might be able to share with you. Uh, Mr. Dalton Nickerson, moderator and congregation of First uh, Church North Miami. Grace and peace to you in this festive day as you gather as a church to celebrate the founding of First Church North Miami, one the congregational 100 years ago. On behalf of the Florida Conference, United Church of Christ, we wish you blessings and peace as you gather this day. We're thankful for the covenantal relationship with you um, and your faithful witnesses in North Miami over, these past, over this past century. What a wonderful milestone it is to be part of such a rich, treasured legacy as a congregation. And we talked a little bit about that, and we're going to hear more about it in a minute. Today, as you gather, you remember the faithful souls who lived out the gospel and exercised God's love in forming this church. You remember faithful pastoral leaders who preached and taught the faith to countless people. You remember Sunday school teachers and choir directors, the church secretaries, the moderators, the deacons, deacon chairs, and so many others who devoted their lives to this church and its mission and ministry. It is good to remember. You also gather to celebrate the Spirit's presence right now, right here today in the present moment. God is doing a new thing in North Miami and this period of transition in your life together is one filled with grace and possibility. God is working in your midst right this minute and will also carry you through into the future. The future ahead is uncertain and perhaps even a little murky. Our people of faith know that the future is, in fact, in God's hands. We can trust that the God who was present 100 years ago when this church was formed, the God who is with you right now as you celebrate this milestone anniversary, will be present to those gathered, to those who have yet to discover First Church, and will be led by God who hopes our future and who does not abandon us in this time of need. Anniversaries are a time to give thanks for the past, to celebrate the present and to look forward to the future that God holds in store for this congregation. May your celebrations this very day be as joyful as possible as you move into God's future as people of faith. Happy 100th anniversary, Kent J. Salati, Conference Minister. And I would ask the moderator, Dalton. Nick, would you step up, please? Here is a plaque which we would like to present to you. Florida Conference, United Church of Christ, January 10th, 1912. We, your Christian brothers and sisters of the Florida Conference, recognize and celebrate the faithful ministry of the people of First Church of North Miami Congregational as you celebrate your 100th anniversary. We are grateful for the many years, for the many ways through the years and in the present time in which you have been and are a people of faith in this community offering and furthering God's reconciling love through worship, study, 
Fellowship and Service presented this ninth day of September, 2012. Thank you, Bill. And if you'll convey our thanks to the conference, uh, as you will, uh, we would certainly appreciate it. Thank you much. And I will move on then to Jan Steinberg, who will bring greetings to you from our Florida Conference Board of Directors. Jan? Thank you, Bill. I bring you greetings from the Board of Directors for the Florida Conference, of which I am a member. I am on the executive board, and I am a member at large. I have a letter from Susan Cheney, the moderator of the Florida Conference, and she says, Dear members of the First Church of North Miami, sincerest congratulations to your church in celebration of your 100th anniversary. Certainly this is an historic day for your congregation. I join with many others in the Florida Conference who may not be able to attend your celebration in person to wish you well and thank God for your faithful presence in the United Church of Christ. From meager beginnings, you have created a warm and welcoming place for anyone seeking Jesus to worship and find comfort, support, and friendship. God bless your church and God bless your congregation. May you enjoy many more decades of faithful service to the Lord and to the community. Peace and love, Susan Cheney, moderator, Florida Conference. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Jan. Um, just briefly, I came to North Miami in 1964. He came to Florida, in, to Miami Beach in 1961 and moved into North Miami in 1964. And I was looking for a church, and this is the church I found. And the very first sermon I heard in my new home in North Miami was by Reverend Jack Smith. Jack Smith, you have kept me here all these years. Will you come and share with us your thoughts about First Church and its history? church 
The first employee of the church was a janitor hired for 50 cents a week. A poet has written, little of all we value here wakes on the morn of its hundredth year. Surprise, first church is alive and well and serving the community. I'm very impressed with the newsletter, the Palm Fronds, whoever does that um, gets a vote from me. And the activities and the contents of that letter are very fine and I hope it keeps on coming. Um, in 100 years, as it's been pointed out, hundreds of faithful Christians have made this church possible. Would that we had and could read all of their names. We salute them in the heavenly mansions. I do want to stop and pause just for a moment, though, to recognize the Christians who are here, that were here when this uh, sanctuary and related buildings were built. Uh, my friends and those that shared in uh, my ministry, and I'm truly grateful. Would you raise your hand so we can see who you are? for any money today. <laughs> there is, however, one person more than anyone else whose loyalty and faithfulness to Jesus Christ resulted in this present lovely and useful complex of buildings. And that person, as you all know, is the man for whom this hall is named, George C. Pullman. George was 66 years old when he retired and came to First Church. Within a year, this present hall that we were in was built. He retired again and his successor split the congregation. 30% of the people left with 40% of the budget. George came back and the congregation rallied. George retired again and the Reverend Herbert Studebaker became the interim. He also was in his 80s and had been the minister in Lake Worth. Meanwhile, George at some point in this had gone to Del Delray Beach to start a new church. George was an excellent preacher. He was always prepared and preaching from a manuscript even though you were not aware of it. He never wavered in his desire to see that a new sanctuary was built. He encouraged me every step of the way. In 1961, shortly after I arrived, he wrote this. When church building gets into one's blood, he dare not let, quote, too poor, unquote, or this isn't the time, quote, unquote, get in the way. I have the feeling that the people need the chance to make real sacrifice so that someone who thinks of giving $100 can dare himself to give a thousand. Well anyway, I think, think you will find that some are quite ready to accept a great challenge when the time is right. Your ministry there will be blessed of God and great days will be yours when a new sanctuary is ready. Hope I live long enough to see its reality and he lived long beyond that. <laughs> George and Edith Pullman came to North Miami in the winter for a few years. Edith died and George was heartbroken. He eventually married a lovely woman, a member of this congregation, Daisy Butler. After their marriage, George wouldn't call her Daisy. He went back to her real name, which was Maria, but we remember her as Daisy. I do not remember how many times George Pullman would send me a letter and at the end of it he'd say, well, here's a check for $1,000 for the building fund. And every time he did this, he expressed the hope that others would do the same. Ultimately, he gave $10,000 in the form of a gift annuity. Dr. Pullman died in 1987 at the age of 99. Another person who played a major role in the building of the project was Gus Buckley and his wife Doris and five children. They came to Miami from Massachusetts. He was a salesman of institutional sewing machines. I'm fairly certain he had been a Catholic and had not participated in church activities. I can still see him when he walked in this hall one day and came in and introduced himself. Yet, without uh, any hesitation, he spearheaded the fund drive for the new building. And during the construction of this complex, he was on the site almost every day. Well, there's one other person that has meant a lot to First Church, and she happens to be here today, and that's Dorothy Beck. <laughs> she served as secretary for 17 years, sang in the choir, 
and took an important role in most major church functions. She was more than a secretary. She was and is a devoted and caring Christian. She covered my sins for four years. In a quiet, most of the time, and unassuming way, she was and is a friend to all of us. She and her husband, Major, were always enthusiastic about this church. He was co-chairman for the 50th anniversary, and Dottie served on the 75th. Had it not been for Major, there would be no pipe organ in this church. Now let me talk just for a few minutes about the years 1961 to 1972 and the building of the sanctuary and related buildings. <clears throat> in early 1961, I had no thought of North Miami. In fact, I was hoping to return to a pastorate in the north. At a luncheon meeting of UCC clergy downtown at Robertson Memorial Church, I sat next to Herbert Studebaker, Studebaker, who was the interim here at North Miami. We discussed a number of things, and finally he said to me, they can use you at North Miami. The rest is history. Having been an associate at Plymouth Church in Coconut Grove, I was impressed that it was a garden church. Eventually, we hired Clyde Hudson from that church to be the architect for this church. The result, he designed a garden church so that every part of this complex had a nature view. I still think this is one of the most outstanding small sanctuaries in the state of Florida and perhaps beyond with its coral rock front, coral rock background in the chancel and at the uh, end of the building, the exposed wind wooden beams and glass sanctuary doors. The congregation approved the final drawings in 1966. That would have been uh, 14 years after the uh, start of the building campaign. The financial campaign was raised, resulting in $45,000 from about 130 people. There were no big givers. Maybe the biggest was a couple thousand. The contractor, a Florida cracker by the name of Victor Cribb, was hired for the project. And it was financed by the same body of the United Church which made the $500 loan in 1912. Mrs. Elon Gribble, a charter member, was president at Back Groundbreaking. She had not been attending church at all when I came. I called on her and she liked me because I wore a hat, straw hat I guess it was, <laughs> and had a jacket, which uh, old time, if some of you are old enough to remember that old time Florida crackers always dressed up. Yeah. And uh, so we became friends, and I called on her regular, and she was uh, here for the groundbreaking. Along, her son Jay Houston was a elected official of the city, and he became active again too. The last parts of the building were completed, and I personally watched the contractor Victor Cribb chipping away at the rough-hewn cross, which is so outstanding at the uh, end of the chancel with the coral rock. And we also watched Bruce Angel and his assistant install the Angel pipe organ. How proud we were when the first service was held on Mother's Day, May 14, 1967, 45 years ago. The church was dedicated May 28th with Dr. Pullman preaching on the subject, the church is a miracle, and indeed it is. It's a miracle uh, and continues to be a miracle, but it is Christ Church and uh, we all should be proud to be a part of it. On October 22nd of that same year, 350 persons gathered to hear Peg Smith play the dedication program for the pipe organ. I think this was the, the biggest and the loudest uh, uh, event that ever happened in First Church. Um, finally, a personal word about the Smith family. When we moved to Sarasota in 1972, I became the executive, second executive director of Plymouth Harbor, a 25-story retirement home founded by the Congregational Church with 340 people, 250 apartments, a 60-bed nursing home, and 10 assisted living units. I remained in that position for 14 years until I retired and became a chaplain for Holland America Line. Peg and I enjoy all kinds of cruising and transatlantic crossings. Peg has never and probably will never stop playing the organ. She is music director at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Boca Grande, a position she has held for 23 years. Our three children send greetings. 
Mark, the youngest son, was born here in North Miami at North Miami General Hospital and is a CPA in Sarasota. Paul is a strange a trained chef and he occasionally works at it, but he is now uh, in sales in Sarasota. Our daughter, Carol, who is an artist, uh, is not working at art, at art right now. She is enjoying performing with her bluegrass band, Little Sparrow, and uh, playing in a bake, working in a bakery. And it's an interesting of note that her singing career started in this room at the age of six when she sang the Good Ship Lollipop and other Shirley Temple songs for the mother-daughter team. And finally, let me say, one of the reasons I came to North Miami may be of some interest, special interest to some. When I came over here to look over this building, that's all it was at that point, plus the, down there, the one thing that impressed me was that the building was clean. Larry Woods, Lawrence Woods, was the janitor at that time, and it looked then as good as it looks now. So congratulations to all of you for keeping this up. If I were 25 years younger, I might come back. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Uh, if you have any questions about the building of this church or anything else that's uh, important, I would be glad to take them at this time. Well, should we take an offering? <laughs> your tickets in? Yes. Do you have your money in? Yes. Um, I would call on Alex, Alec, please, and um, and Sebastian. Would y'all come out here? Are they are they in the kitchen? They better. Alex and Sebastian, would you all come up here, please? You're going to do the drawing. Um, I just want to say a few things about uh, First Church and its youth. We don't have a lot of kids. But we have a lot of heart, and as I said during the worship service, we sent, our small church sent more kids to the National Youth Event than most other churches in the state of Florida. For that, I think you all should give yourselves a round of applause. In, in writing palm fronds, um, the last issue is devoted pretty much to National Youth Event. Uh, I, uh, we printed all of Jan Steinberg, who is our youth minister, who is, uh, walks on water as far as I'm concerned. Um, but going through all of the, the things that the, that the youth had written, I really, really had a hard time selecting the portions. I was kind to you all. I really was because there's some stuff in there that, that, um, that, right, right. At any rate, so we are still paying for this event, and because of that we had, uh, this by the way was designed and created by moi, um, and, and donated for this exact purpose. So one of them's gonna shake the plate, and plate uh, the bowl, and the other one is gonna draw. So bring out your tickets, hang on.
How cool is that? It is. The one I Here's the bracelet. It's perfect. Oh, it's beautiful. Here are the earrings. Do you have pierced earrings? I hope. Yes, I do. Okay. And here. I'm so glad you took your other jewelry off. Is there reason wearing any? Thank you. There you are. Wear it in good health. Oh, I promise. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you all for participating. Um, if you haven't seen the our celebratory cake, please go take a look at it. You're about to get a piece. Let us pray. Eternal God. What a wonderful day of celebration. We thank you for your presence with us, surrounding us with your Holy Spirit. That Spirit has been present. We all feel it. May that Spirit continue to direct and guide this congregation every day in the future. And may the fullness and richness of their past be only superseded by their future which we pray will be a good and faithful and glorious one. Through Christ who strengthens us, amen.